the idea uh, was very simple that as soon as we started automating all this process, we realized that actually all fields and all uh, information which is needed to change request uh, can be can be accessible, can be visible through, through CI/CD pipeline, and uh, we can take we can identify those places where we make those changes, where we validate uh, changes. Uh, gather all this information, and uh, during the deployment, we can pass all this information uh, to ServiceNow completely bypassing any manual uh, interactions. And obviously, all approvals are being replaced by, so for example, if in the past, in order to get pre approval, you had to physically reach out to all testers, get this information. But, but in reality, how people make this decision, uh, you are looking at the tests, and if main tests passed, and maybe some not so important tests failed, but you understand that it's uh, not a big deal, then you give a manual permission saying, yes, I'm okay to deploy. When you automate, you can see, you know, you can, you know which test should pass, you know which test, when it is okay for certain tests to fail. So you're getting an evidence, you are using it as an approval. Yet, uh, so one by one, all approvals can be good analyzed and uh, and after, the, after that, David came to me and said, Fyodor, do you know what? Now we are getting all uh, main door metrics to measure. Now we can, uh, we can measure uh, development. We are getting all this data for free out of this automation. He said, what? <laughs> how, can we, how you can measure uh, development? So this is how we, so it was one of the discoveries of all. Okay, so now I'm passing uh, to Elena, who will and then we can. Hello everyone, my name is Elena Gills and I'm a global IT change manager. So um, here in Wiley, what we do, we are powering education and we are enabling the discovery. So shaping the work works based on the continuous deployment, continuous delivery, as Peter said, that's a requirement nowadays in agile world. So that's what we wanna talk about. And when we started the process, we looked at the current process, what we have there, and how we can improve and what we can get at the end. So here you can see, I'm not gonna go through all of that, but the main factor was that there was a manual creation and we have auto-created CR form at the end. And not only that gives us real victory that we don't have manual errors, but it gives us the opportunity to look at the form without any people's interaction and having everything in place, what we can present to our auditors. So what do we do? We, as a change requester, you submit it, you need to put all the artifacts and uh, you need to go through the Jira Confluence, whatever you're using, all the test results. But now, again, we are populating the form what I call a push the button, which Feather doesn't really like, but we take the code, we go uh, through the different environments, starting the lower environments, you can start with the development, go through the QA, and when you're ready, you go in production. Why? We have that win also for our customers. We are customer centric. We make it simple. We want to deliver for, to the product team um, in the timely manner. We want to deliver it in the safe manner where we have our QA representatives over there. Also, we're very excited and now we can measure it. So uh, this is the success that we want to bring. We're going to talk about the successes. We're going to talk about the failure. Uh, we actually spent uh, almost three years with our wonderful DevOps people here and also ServiceNow development team. We did that solution and built it in-house so what do we wanted to do we wanted to have the capability why we want to support the frequent frequent deployment and as Feather said we don't want to wait till the next cab is get all the people together review the artifacts review the risk we want to do that in this cr itself what what does what do we have there automation is enabling teams to consistently push the code through the CICD pipeline. And it really brings us the rollout strategy, which is more safe and also measurable. So 
uh, here you can see the CICD pipelines and you see the architecture. Um, again, just in a nutshell, we have the developers, they get the information and we start with the product owner, we start with a Jira ticket, we start with the requirements and we get it. Um, developers are assigned and we go through the source management. It's very safe because we are using the version control. We have test results here. We have changes that were made and stuff like that. So the case study, this is my favorite part. Um, we had applications who were pilots uh, for our process. Research exchange was the first one, but here I want to present the Wiley Plus, really business critical um, operation here in Wiley. Um, so we decided to look at it and see if we can onboard them and what's needed for that. So again, they have very strict requirements. They need to be included in every release, and that's why we needed to know how we do with that. So that's the overall process. So we have a Jira, again, starting with the product owner, business owner, um, and that goes to the development team, goes through the GitHub, gets all the artifacts there, what we need, and it goes uh, straight to the deployment and release. The monitoring is a place. We have um, all the testing, all possible testing already automated, so we include it as well. That's the solution. So solution is simple. We automate uh, creation of the change request. We do the, we use Jenkins job as an orchestration tool, which gets us all the information. It goes through the process, deployment goes through the process. We collect all the information and at the end, which is also very important, if anyone is using ServiceNow here, we know the tickets are open, but never close. We don't have that problem anymore. So we have um, A to Z, everything going there, and it's in a matter of seconds, really. Again, uh, we're presenting the change management and including the service now and the tools, how we operate, where we start, where we finish. Uh, it will be available so you will be able to see that. Um, again, we're going back to the audit requirements compliance. We always, as change managers, are looking at the artifacts. We do need the business case and the product requirements. We do link that to the JIRA projects. We have release notes. We even have a rollback um, backup plan. Very important. Testing, we do have it there. And this SQA sign off is also there. Business and technical leads approvals should be there before you release anything in production. Now, um, we actually gone through a couple of iteration. The first one, which was research exchange, they were using the test rail, so that was easy. When we were onboarding Wiley Plus, we actually did the second modification and there was version number two. So we accept not only projects that are tested in the test rail, but we also accept anyone who can participate. And that one, for example, was Jason. Um, export from Allure, and that was also included. So that was really good modification, and it makes us flexible. What can we offer to development team, to operation team, and what are we do at the end? Business benefits. I love to talk about ROI. <laughs> we always calculate ROI because we want to know. And this is very modest. Uh, there was a calculation that Wiley Plus, in the beginning, they gave us. What does it mean to them? For me, it's a big win, big, not only monetary value, but also customers, product owners who want to deliver it in nowadays market. We need to do it really fast. We want to be agile. We want to be flexible. And that's what we offer. Now we have the accurate data now metrics, and we can definitely show that. Operational benefits from our side, we are using the CICD pipeline. We are reducing the risk of the human error and uh, we supply the artifacts, all of that needed 
to the ServiceNow ticket. So one year from now, just imagine you put the ticket in the ServiceNow, and one year from now, uh, the auditors come in and asking you to show what was the flow in production. Now it's very easy. You don't have to remember, you don't have to save the documentation. All you have to do, open the change request. If we have time, whenever the questions will be, I will show you the difference. We'll do the live demo and show you what the conventional change request looks like in the service now and what information you can store there in the future time, which we're using. So the future is here. Um, all the benefits I just talked about just come down to you. It's simple, it's effective, it's flexible, and the standard. So that's what we want to say. Again, at the end of the presentation, maybe we'll show you the live demo if you wanted to, but now that's the big chunk of it. Um, Dave came up with the DORA metrics, and that will be probably very interesting to see. Yeah, it's interesting. Usually I open up this presentation with the background and the research, but thanks to Dave, I don't have to do that. So I can jump ahead a few slides. And as you can see, Dave, I included your model. So I've been visiting your site. <laughs> but um, as Feder mentioned, we, we, we stumbled ac across this where we had an opportunity where we could actually start um, measuring our software delivery performance. I sat down with uh, Feder and Alina and I noticed the information that we're gathering, we could easily, um, we could easily start reporting the metrics um, because we're capturing all the data for compliance all the way from planning all the way to the release. So we had an opportunity there and we're storing it all in service now. So uh, the stability part of it, the change failure rate and MTTR is simple. I mean, you can grab that straight out of um, service now. Change failure rate, there's some manual steps that are involved. We have to relate the incident to an outage, unfortunately, so we can't really automate that. But we saw the opportunity where we could actually start measuring throughput. Um, and how we're measuring that is the deployments. Every time we create or we close an automated change request, that's a deployment. That's a deployment out to production. So every deployment out to production, every closed uh, change request, that's a deployment out to production. And then we just calculate it based on the time frame that we're selecting. So that's your number of uh, that, that's your deployment frequency. Lead time. I, I also noticed that we're gathering all the information from GitHub, um, the pull request and the uh, and the commits. And um, how we're calculating lead time, lead time for change is from the first code commit for that release. I know there might be some debate around that, but uh, <laughs> that's how we're calculating it right now. We're going to see how that's that's going to work out. And this is really a pilot right now. We haven't um, scaled this across the organization, but we have plans to do that. Um, but anyway, um, as you can see, um, Alina mentioned research exchange. If you notice, we're, they deploy on a weekly basis. And um, the the in the details in the gray, um, they they deploy on a weekly basis. But we know by looking at the data, they can deploy daily, e easily deploy daily. But if you look at the lead time, it's 29 days. So that's something we want to um, dig deeper into and research that, so we can actually improve our deployment frequency. And what we want to keep an eye on is stability to make sure we're not optimizing and you know for deployment frequency and lead time and then impacting stability so this gives us a, a real-time um, metrics into that that um, the software delivery performance yeah. and this is where science also come into picture because the guys actually deploy up to 10 times per working day but they don't deploy on saturday and sunday and that, that, that's why by definition so how they measure in order to have daily deployment you need to deploy on daily so that's yeah. So that's why it is weekly. So, but you, you have all this data, so it's. And they are definitely a high performing team. That's for sure. Um, I, another opportunity, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. I, this actually allows us or gives us an opportunity to really look at our development value streams in detail. We could actually extract more artifacts or more data out of the disparate tools in our de DevOps pipeline bring it into service now and report in real time how this is playing out and, and basically look at our value stream real time. And this will help us get, research more on a granular level real time and spot bottlenecks in the process. Again, this is something that I, I think we can do and we just, you know, that's probably our next step is to actually 
um, visualize our value streams and, and look at it real time. And that's it. Yeah, and thank you. you want to say something? Yeah, and uh, from my perspective, big advantage uh, of this approach that any each and any tool which you heard, GitHub, Jira, Confluence, uh, whatever else service now, they are not critical, they're not imp super important. You can use something else. It may be not GitHub, it may be GitLab or Bitbucket. Maybe not Jira, you may use something else. You may use different, but this approach will work anyway. And uh, from one side, it's enabler of, of frequent of frequent deployments. From another side, if you can deploy daily, you already have discipline, and you probably already have all artifacts. So no excuse not to generate change requests. So sort of uh, you are automatically out of frequent deployments, and uh, your uh, discipline with CI/CD, uh, you are getting change management automation. 